my first foray in photography was um, in 97 or 98. I was in college at, at A&M. So I tried to teach myself and I built a dark room in my house. Um, and that, uh, I, I played around with that for a little less than a year. And then I joined the army. So all that stuff went away. Um, everything went away. And um, I got packed up, put in boxes. And it's, it's still in, the, in my parents' attic, I believe, my old dark room. It wasn't until uh, 2010, my first child was born, um, I got a digital camera. I had um, examples of things that I liked that involved just kind of family photography, and I, I re kind of reverse engineered them by just learning off the internet, looking at tutorials and, and Googling how to, how to do this certain thing and that that really kind of took off um, and became an obsession the only aspect of the family photography that I still do uh, are the child portraits the resulting uh, portrait is uh, kind of a look into the child's future I think um, you, you, you end up seeing something there that most people aren't going to see from this kid for a couple of years Looking around on the internet, looking around Instagram, a lot of people were doing street photography, which I thought was interesting, um, and it was accessible. Um, so I started going out in downtown Houston, and it's a business district. Nobody, there's not really anything interesting happening. So I was trying to, I was, I was trying to jump into the street photography thing, but my only place at the time that I could go was extremely just kind of bland and boring so um, time slip came out of this desire to make something out of nothing so all I was I was just kind of sitting around downtown watching kind of the traffic patterns um, and so I I started trying to pick a, a single person out of a crowd and just kind of Put them within a frame, within a frame, um, and that's that's where the time slip came from. It was just just taking one person out of the crowd uh, and and just kind of presenting like this is a little slice of this um, kind of uh, hectic traffic that's that's going back and forth. I'm just pulling something out of it. Drawing bones was very personal. It was just each each one was a, a self portrait, and there was I was learning to express myself in ways that I I'd never even known was possible. In the middle of uh, coming up with the concept for creating bones, I had been going to these meetings with uh, all different artists, and there were critique meetings, and we would critique every everybody that showed up. Uh, would critique everything that was brought and there was you know painting sculpture photography drawings uh, just kind of a little bit of everything and that really opened my eyes uh, and and helped me open my eyes to uh, art in general how to express yourself and um, really helped me focus on what throwing bones was and what it should be I really kind of missed what I was doing with the time slip, but I wasn't very interested in doing it candidly anymore. So I started enlisting uh, my friends, uh, other artists specifically, um, to, to model for me. And um, once, once I did that and I had some of these images um, of people I knew, then they, it kind of turned into something else. And I, I realized what I was seeing was you, you, didn't, you couldn't recognize the person normally because of the way the images are, they're, they're very blurry. But uh, it captured, I realized it captured uh, something else about them that I didn't realize when I was doing it candidly with people I didn't know. It was, but there, there's a recognition there of the person that reminded me of when I was in the military 
um, and we'd be doing exercises at night out in the woods and there would be hundreds of guys out in the woods all you could really see were silhouettes and movement um, but you knew who everybody was based essentially on the way they moved and I see that in the, in the what I'm calling motion portraits now. I had done some motion portraits um, with, uh, I'd done one of myself and I paired it up with um, one that I had done with someone else. I like the way they, they worked off of each other. They kind of showed like two aspects of my personality, I thought. If I tried to take that, the idea of that, that relationship of two different sides of yourself and I tried to expand on that. And that's, that's where oscillations came from. It really became uh, very similar to throwing bones in that they're you know conceptual self-portraits and I'm trying to ex you know express kind of these inner feelings that I've never really been able to get out before and so it becomes a very cathartic um, series. I, I first started photographing fire hydrants for throwing bones um, and once, once I started looking for the, the right fire hydrant to photograph, to, to add into my collages, I, I couldn't stop looking at fire hydrants. And so for years, I just kind of noticed them everywhere I went. I made mental notes. I really like that one. I really like that one. One of these days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a series just on fire hydrants. Um, <clears throat> and I, I finally just one day decided, okay, I've, I've thought about it long enough, I'm just gonna do it. So I, I took all the lighting and the concepts from the child portraiture and, and just translated that into fire hydrants because they're, they're the right size, they're kind of the size, roughly the same size as a kid. Uh, and they, they're just, they're like little fire hydrants, they're like little people. I know there's, they've got their own personality, they've got their own little environment, and I wanted, I really kind of wanted to show that. As far as brand new directions, um, that will come up as I just work every single day. Um, doing that, it, trying to evolve what I'm currently doing leads to offshoots into new series. When you're trying to create every day, um, you get this momentum going. And a lot of times, it's, it's hard to keep that momentum going forward. And then sometimes it's like, you know, you're pushing the, a giant boulder up a hill. Sometimes it's like you're pushing that giant boulder down the hill and you end up, you realize there's, there's art here. And I can I can actually make art.